So here's our video, or at least the beginning of it, and it's looking great, but some of the pieces that we see here are not yet in the video that you've been building as you follow along. For example, there is a warlock who walks around this farmstead here. He is not currently in our scene, so let's fix that. I am using this particular warlock character. Uh, he's available in the asset store from Mr. Nectaris. We're going to fly down here and the warlock will walk around, go around the fence and then around to the front of the house to where the chicken coops are. And so first of all, we need to uh, put our warlock into the scene. We'll put him behind this tree here. Uh, so he's not visible to the camera to start with. And that way we don't see him kind of standing around doing nothing. So let's close this up and go to the warlock. And inside of here, you can find some models and prefabs. Here is our warlock prefab. So let's drop, drop him into the scene, is it about here? And I want to um, create my own prefab using uh, this warlock because I'm going to do some edits to it. Um, let's start off with doing that. So we drag the, let's actually rename it, uh, warlock for fly through. Okay, and drag him into the My Stuff folder, which is uh, where I conveniently put things that I have edited. So now I want to edit that prefab because he currently has uh, both a staff in his hand and a staff on his back. So I'm going to take the one out of his hand. So here is the left hand, here is the right hand, here is his staff. So let's rename that to staff in right hand and let's turn it off. I've renamed it just so it's easier to find it if I use this um, prefab for something else. It's not necessary. So go back to our scene and now we have him in the scene we need to animate him moving through the scene. We could use a nav mesh and just set, set the nav mesh component but then he might decide to walk around this side for example. We won't have full control and since this is a cutscene we do want to have full control. Now we can use Pegasus to drive our character, the same tool that we use to drive the camera uh, in the fly through. So let's add a Pegasus manager. Last time we did it with a Pegasus capture, this time we're going to use Pegasus manager to show you how to do this manually. Um, we want him to just walk once, we don't want him to keep walking. So we're going to make this a single shot. And we also want to make sure he stays along the terrain. So we already have check height against the terrain, um, but we want the minimum POI height to be zero. Um, we also want to set the frame rate to be fixed at 60 frames per second for our cutscene. Okay, so that's the setup that we need there to, to start with. And we can now start building our uh, POI, our um, path rather. So we'll start somewhere around here. So it is control and left click. Let's just make those gizmos a bit smaller. And then we want him to walk around the corner of the house here. So we'll do a control left click there. It's actually gone up above and this one has gone above as well. So let's fix that here. We can do that by going to utilities, set POI to minimum height, and now they're all down on the ground. So this one has now gone too far out over this way. So we can simply pull that around like that. Go back to our Pegasus manager. Okay, looking good. So then we need to set the global speed. Um, let's set the global speed of this to something like 1.2 meters per second set speed. And if we look at the POIs, we now see that the speed is set at 1.2 meters per second on each one. Okay, all good. Now, if we were to run at this point, our character would indeed follow this POI. No, he wouldn't. I lie. I forgot something. Pegasus Manager, we need to set the target object to the Warlock for the fly-through. So if I, if I do this now, he will walk, or rather he will move, but he won't be animated. We need to tell Pegasus to animate the character. So we go back to our Warlock character here, and we choose the Pegasus 
animation controller, which is, I believe, in animation. There we go. So we drag that into the animator. And we also need to put the Pegasus animator into here. And we could actually put this on the Pegasus manager for this character. I'm going to keep it here. You should keep it all in one place, but whatever works best for you. And also drop the animator into here. We'll start with idle. We have root motion turned on in the animator and Pegasus is driving the motion. So we probably don't want that to happen. Um, we can turn it off here um, and we can go back to using our warlock animations now. Um, idle. Oh, I keep spelling idle the wrong way. Okay, and walk. And run. Ah. Ah. I always find I can't type when somebody is watching me. Look away when I'm typing. It'll be much easier. All right, let's try that. There we go. So apart from his speed, oops. Oh, and he's turned the wrong way there. He's turning around, look. That last one is facing the wrong way. Interesting. You don't want him to turn around. So speed is wrong, and that last one he turned around. So we go to our manager. We set our global speed maybe to two across the board, and then check that last poi out. Why is that last one facing the opposite direction? Let's have him look back this way into there, or maybe into look in there. See, he can be looking to uh, see if there's any food in the thing there. Okay, let's try that. Looking good. Speed isn't quite right still. Pegasus Manager, put it up to three. They are now changed. And I want to move the camera as well while I'm at it. Let's make the camera here because we can see the whole thing. So select the camera, Shift Control F. We can now see in the game view as well as in the scene view. All right, so here's what it looks like in the near final cut. As we come over here, the uh, Warlock has started animating and you can see him walking through there. We'll come down and fly past him. But one thing that's missing at the moment is that trigger that animates him, that starts him walking. And so we'll look at that in the next video.